Mm. Hey, Suzanne. How are hey. you this morning? <laughs> Good morning. I heard you saying somebody wasn't feeling well, but I, I was just catching the end of it. Uh, yeah, Jeff is not feeling well, so we got to keep him in our prayers. He's um, okay. Thank you for the update. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's been under the weather for a couple of days. So. That's not good. Mm -hmm. oh, no, it's not good. It's not good. If you guys could all turn your cameras on, I'm going to be a broken record for about another minute while we're waiting for some everybody to jump on here. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it when he's had it on. Just makes, especially for a mastermind call like like we do the first Tuesdays, it just makes for a lot more engagement and interaction to be able to kind of see people's faces and look into their eyes. <laughs> we got people rolling in. We usually end up with a pretty good crowd, so been good. Have y'all, did y'all go to um, Aaron Ken's listing um, listing series? Have y'all been in that? Um, I saw one of his, I might've been the original before it turned into a series. Yeah. Um, he makes it sound so easy, but I'm like, I just can't see myself, you know, doing that and having that confidence. Um. Oh, you can do that, Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll talk about that today, as, a, as a whole, not, not specifically for you, but maybe that's something we can talk <laughs> about. You know, it's like, how do we have the confidence to go out there and, you know, do some of those things? I actually would like to hear. So let's go ahead and get started. So Kaylin, thanks for, she said she's going to jump to a laptop so she can put her beautiful face on here too. So um, like I said, let's go ahead and get started. So I think all y'all know, know me. me. Whoops. Whoops. Why is that? Why is that? Echoing. Okay. That's better. I don't know what that called that. But I think everybody knows me. My name is Kathy Carter. I'm out in Nashville, Tennessee. And um, one of the Freedom Team leaders, we started this group um, it's been about a year and a half ago. Um, so it's everybody that's under Sean Sturrock. Um, so all you guys um, are part of that team, most likely. And so we welcome you to this. We every for the first Tuesday of every month, we just do an open mastermind just to talk about things that are on your mind, things you're experiencing in the market, things that you're struggling with. And, you know, one several minds are better than one mind. So that's what the concept of, um, of today is. And so, Suzanne, let's kind of start with what you what you actually commented Um so I don't know if y'all have all been seeing Aaron Ken's series that he's done on the listings. Um, it's phenomenal. So if you do listings, if you want to get better at listings, I'd encourage you to go back. They're all in the Freedom Team Workplace group to go back and watch his presentation from before he even gets to the listing appointment, you know, and what he does in the listing appointment. Um, it's phenomenal what he does. It's no wonder he sells $20 million, you know, a year in real estate. And so, Suzanne, you made the comment that you um, you weren't sure if you could have the confidence, um, you know, that Aaron does. So kind of talk about that a minute. Let's open it up there, because I'm sure you're not the only one that may be feeling the same way. And so when you say that, what what do you what are you um, referring to? Well, I don't mean this to sound negative, but like when some of the things he was talking about. To me, sounded a little cocky and it's. I know it's not cocky if you can support it or whatever type of thing, but I just feel like coming from me, I it just wouldn't have the same, you know, credibility or whatever that he does. And I feel so is like- Is there something specific you're thinking or talking about? I wish I- remembered more I just remember like listening to it going wow this is impressive but on the other hand I was like I could never see myself I mean just some of the what like he kind of I got the impression like he went in there with the attitude like well you know I I don't I don't know how to say I mean he just went in full of confidence maybe 
Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. And yeah. I guess just, especially the way things have been going for me lately, I just don't feel like I could portray that confidence, even though, you know, type of thing. Um, I mean, well, we've all heard that saying, you got to fake it till you make it. Right. right. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, we got to start somewhere and maybe you're not doing all the things that he, that he does, but you know, th there's a lot of good things. Like I love all the stuff he does pre-listing when he, you know, creates the website, he creates just all sorts of, you know, things on the front end that he right. said, I bet he walks into those listing appointments and has the listing 90% one before he's ever even walked in the door. Right. So that's the you know, impression if, I got. Mm. So if you can do that before you ever walk in, Right. You know, then you almost don't have to have as much confidence when you're in the door because you've blown their socks off before you've ever gotten in the front door. Um, to I'll, I'll rewatch that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely rewatch that. Paul, you got your hand up. Yeah, can you hear me, Kathy? Yeah. So, I mean, we all know that everything starts with mindset. And, you know, being an EXP, um, was in a realty for 15 years and now in commercial and overseeing my own group here that's me in commercial, the other part in residential. <laughs> You know, just the training we get, like this session we're on right now, the past couple of years, mindset's been extremely important to me, just to start with positivity, maybe a morning prayer or a morning reflection, um, get yourself ready for the day. You know, it all starts there to get, get our head right, and then get to that point where I watched a couple of those videos he did. They're incredible, but he goes into that appointment pretty much knowing that he is kind of in charge. He is in charge, not kind of. He's in charge. He's going to, here's how thing, the table is set. This is how it works. And I was talking with my wife, Lisa, about this, I because Lisa has not been doing it as long as me on the front line. And she's now selling a bunch of homes and feeling more confident because of her sales. But I'm like, Lisa, we've been doing this 30 years. You've just been sitting next to me. But you go to that kitchen table on a listing appointment, you have to believe that you are the best agent at that time right there if you don't believe that you go in with weakness you're going to kind of you know they might interview somebody else they might go with somebody else so you got to have that strength in your mind and it just starts with your day with me I have to have an organized office I spent yesterday cleaning my office all day putting every piece of paper in a file I can't get on to my next task till I'm organized so everybody's got their way to start their day or their week but um mindset's the beginning what do you, you know, do take one step me? at a time Thank you. Yeah. I need I need a filing system for all my stickies. <laughs> but hey, Michael Hignan is on here. Hey, buddy. Um, how are you today? Doing yes, well. You? Talking to me. <laughs> yeah. So Michael, like Michael sells a bazillion dollars in real estate um, as well. So he's um, an icon agent. And so Michael, I don't know if you've watched any of it. We're kind of talking right now about Aaron's um listing um theories that he's done i don't know if you've had a chance to get on that because i know you're so busy um but whether you have or haven't how do you prepare going into your listing appointments michael do you have a specific routine because that's what aaron's been teaching about the last four weeks um on what he does um going into it and then what he does once he's there yeah i mean it's um I think the pre-qualification really sets the table. Um, I, and I had not watched those. I apologize. So I'm, I'm speaking blindly on that. But I can say what I do, which is, again, the pre-qualification. So you need to know and you have to come at that from a, a, a journalistic standpoint, whether you use the, the Mike Ferry pre-listing qualification questions or any, any coaching pre-qualifications. You want to know the who, what, when, where, and most importantly, the why. Uh, of why they're going. And, and, and the more important thing is ask the question behind the question so it's like where are you moving to great what does that do for you why are you going there and continue to get in there because and then and then if you're talking to the let's say if it's a it's a married couple moving if you're talking to the husband on on the the phone call and you set the appointment with him your appointment when you're sitting down in front of them your question should be geared towards the wife because you may or may not have talked to her yet and say you know i, I Mr. and Mrs. Seller or, you know, Mary, I talked to your husband, Bill, and he was telling me, you know, I asked, I asked him these questions and I just wanted to reaffirm with you that he was giving me all the information. Is it okay if I just cover those real quick? And of course, she'll say yes. And she says, well, he's moving because he's a golfer and you're moving to Lake Forest and you want to be closer to the family and do all these other things. Anything he's left out. She's like, well, my parents, he left out my parents. They live in the neighborhood. Okay, great. So, hey, you left that out, Bill. 
So you and so is there anything else that this is there anything else that this move does for you? And anytime you can add in humor to that is is a great thing because people it kind of breaks the ice with folks. But and there's an old saying that ninety percent of the decisions upon moving are made by the woman. Okay, the other ten percent the man thinks he's making the decisions. Mm -hmm. So always, always gear your presentation towards, towards the woman. Um, and I just so happen to, I, uh, I use a, a program called um, Full Kit CMA, and they have an EXP uh, profile on there. And, and again, it's a program where I just go through and I download all of my, uh, the comparative market analysis and, and the comps that I bring from our CMA, I download that and, and then upload that to this program and it does a really nice job of doing and printing out some graphs and you can add a ton of them and you can take some out. Most of the people don't really look at those. They want to know two things. Number one is how much is my home going to sell for? And number two is how long is it going to take? Every seller has that question. And then you, the, the periphery is, you know, Hey, here's what I need to do to get it prepared. And basically you put the comps together. It shows a map on there. It shows, you know, all the recommended data, like, it gets down to, you know, what, what are the comps? How long is stuff taking to sell in there? And it, and it really helps an analytical chew on that data um, once you send that over to them. But well, ultimately, like it's how it puts it in the, uh, in the graphs, you know, it shows sort of, you know, it does. And, and it has, yeah. you know, and then gives you, you know, like not just today, page of, path, compared to, you know, the past, it looks like. What is that program called again? Yeah, it's called, it's called Toolkit CMA. Toolkit. And I think I pay like 20 bucks a month for it, something like that. But I use the heck out of it. I also do a, um, something I do is I do a, what's called a churn report. It just shows, and I tell every seller, you know, when, if you go to the corner market and you're, and you're, um, the manager of a store has a certain amount of tomatoes, okay? And he has to turn those over in his produce department. If he has a surplus of tomatoes, what does he have to do to get rid of those? And the seller says, well, he's got to put those on sale. Right. Okay. If he has, let's say the tomato truck turned over on the, on the expressway over here, on the way over, and he has a minute limited supply of tomatoes for the consumers, what can he do with the price? Well, he can raise the price. Exactly. So right now, homes being tomatoes, and you insert whatever product you want there, we have a limited supply of tomatoes on the market because just like here in Louisville, Kentucky, I'm sure in Nashville and um, all over the country, our, our supply is limited. And that's where I start with. And I show them, you know, here's the active and here's the pendings. And then we develop what the churn rate is. And that shows you the months of supply on that. And then I'll scroll and I do that in an Excel um, spreadsheet. And I go all the way down to where, you know, here's, here's your zip code. And here's, you know, your price range based upon the comparative market analysis. So between 350 and 400,000, there are four homes active in this market in your air in your immediate area there are 16 pending so that means that there are you know four times as many pending properties as there are active in this area so you're really well positioned now let's scroll down one more level lower our balloon down to your immediate neighborhood here in lake forest so you kind of want to bring them from a 50,000 foot view all the way to where their uh, neighborhood is and tell a story of yes you're re in really good position now let's look you know apples to apples not, you know, if you're a ranch, I'm not going to look at two-story houses. We're going to look at other ranches that have sold in your neighborhood. And, and Mr. Seller, right now, there's only one other ranch that is sold and there's five pendings. So we have an opportunity to maybe take advantage of that from a pricing standpoint. Um, I know the comps say 350. I don't mind going a little higher just to see if uh, sellers are going to bite on that, but be quick to make that uh, pivot and adjust if the sell if the uh, buyers aren't coming in quickly. That's, I mean, I, I really make it a simple listing presentation. I want them to self-discover and, you know, use their motivation, find out precisely where they're going. Mr. Mr. Seller, can you move to Lexington? Can you move to Lake Forest without selling this home? That's either yes or no. Well, great. If it's yes, we can go ahead and use the cash that you have in place to go put a down payment on and or do a bridge loan or do whatever the scenario is, or no, great. And we have to sell this home for the price we're going to set it for. Do you want to sell it now? Or do you want to wait, you know, 45 days to get it on the market and start selling at that time? Which one do you want to take advantage of? Yeah. 
That's good. And and that's all good preparation on the front end to go in prepared. And I, I, I like that toolkit, you know, presentation, just a couple of pages you flip through there. It gives a very good visual versus just going in with the MLS sheets or whatever maybe somebody else does or even their laptop and says here, you know, here, here's just the graph of, you know, what has sold, what's on the market. You know, the two things that um, that there's a lot of stuff with Aaron that, that I liked on his pre-listing, he goes and he will create a website for their home address. But like he'll go buy a website domain for the cheapest he can find. Like some of them might be one penny, right? It doesn't, he doesn't care if it's dot, you know, whatever, dot, dot IE at the end, you know, so he's not looking for the, the, the website, but it's impressive because nobody does that or very few people do that. And then he shoots a video and he'll send a video message out with some of the links. And I think he sends the, uh, the website link, you know, Hey, I've created this website for you guys. We're going to, when I, when, when we, um, you know, when I come over, we get your property listed, I'm going to be, you know, it's going to have its own website, blah, blah, blah. And so he shoots a video just of some different things and kind of tells a little about himself too. Sends all that out prior to going. Um, so it's really, it's really impressive. So for all of y'all who haven't watched his, um, his stuff, um, I'd say go back and watch it all, but for sure, go back and watch week one, because it's kind of what he does pre-listing that can set you apart for you ever walk in the front door, you know, and then Suzanne, to your point, you know, if your nerves, if you don't feel as confident, if you do some of those things pre-listing, like I said a minute ago, he probably walks in, has 90% of the listing one before he ever opens his mouth, right? So it's really quite good. Paul, you have something else? Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I watched those videos on him talking about that process, and I think it's excellent. But I also remember, you know, newer agents or people that aren't as video friendly, you know, saying, oh, my gosh, I got to do all this and I got to, you know, learn how to do that. And I got to learn how to create a URL. Um, if you can do all that and do it, you know, quickly and swiftly, that's great. If you can't, remember how you eat an elephant one bite at a time. Yeah. So, you know, for people that aren't as confident or they're overwhelmed or they're not sure all the steps in order, just start little by little by little, you know, preparation, mindset, getting ready for that appointment. I mean, I, I wish everybody can do that. EXP would get every listing in the country all the time. But, you know, also be careful if you're a little overwhelmed. You don't need to do everything right away. Add, get the basics down and add to it each week. When you're time blocking, put in your self-help part of time blocking. You know, this week I got to learn how to go get a URL. I have to learn how to do that video and just keep biting off a little each week. Six months from now, you're going to be doing it just like the, the guy in the video said. Yeah, that's good. So let's talk about this real quick. So this was a tip. Look, I've been doing this 24 years. Um, and some all y'all, I'd love your input here um, if you do this. So it's probably it's probably only been a couple of years back, and it's still not seen in my head quite yet. Uh, Good morning, Amy. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. All right, trying to mute everybody here. Um, if guys, if you um, don't have your mics muted, if you're not speaking, um, please make sure when you're coming in to mute mics. But um, on pricing, let's talk about that for a second. When you price a house, do you price it on the twenty-five thousand dollar even, um, or that's five thousand or the ten thousand? So, for instance, instead of like a three ninety-nine price, do you say four hundred thousand? But instead of a three fifty-five or three forty-nine, do you say three fifty? Um, you know, one of the things that made so much sense and Russ Lagan, who's with corporate, he was actually in Nashville. We did an event together this past week and, and he and I were talking about this and I said, I just wrote my own rule on a listing. I had a listed at six ninety nine, and I was like, why did we do that? Let, we went under contract. But the point is when you do six ninety nine, you know, look, think of yourself and your buyers are the same way. When you're searching MLS, you're not putting in you know, 650 to 699, you're putting 650 to 700. So you're missing all those buyers because they're searching the same way. And if you go to Zillow, if you search their parameters, they're like, they're not 699, right? They're on the zero, zero price, uh, price line. So you're missing all, I missed all the buyers that are starting their search at 700,000 on that listing. Makes sense? So some of you people that have been around for a while, curious, 
Have you ever considered that? Do you price that way? What are your thoughts about that? I'd love to just have a little bit of discussion around that. Yeah, 100%. Oh, sorry, Paul. That's okay. 100%. I love that. I, I've always preached that from day one. I'm, I agree. Right on the nut. Because nobody calls their buyer's agent and says, start at 701 and go to 719. They yeah. do it in $50,000 increments, typically, you know, 800 to 850, 850 to 900, sometimes $100,000 increments, the higher you go in price point. But I, I'm 100% in agreement with you. It depends to me on the price point. If I'm looking at a 350 house, I'm going, you know, I'm doing 370, I'm doing $25,000 increments, right? But if you get on up in those upper prices, yeah, it goes 50, 100,000. Uh, who is that that was getting ready to say something? I'm sorry, Kathy. David Coleman for Clear Ohio. You know, I, I totally agree with you. And what I like to do a lot of times is if there people look at, the, at those out or even numbers, I like to also throw in an extra 10 or 15 grand. What's nice about that, that's super, super cool when it comes down to negotiations. It gives you just a tiny bit to start a nice dialogue of opening up an offer. So tell me what that looks like. Tell us what that looks like. Yeah, in other words, let's say they're looking at a $500,000 home. They're searching for $500,000 homes. I'm listing the home at 520. So when you do your search parameters, I want to get that buyer. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm getting a little more, and then that'll put me in a position to negotiate. Okay, so what I would encourage, kind of what, I'm, what my mindset has become, is you just go to 525. Because again, if somebody comes in, they start at 525 and they're looking at 550 or 575, you, you're missing, you're only getting a piece of the buyer pool, right? The, of the eyeballs on it. So we don't, I don't hardly ever search in $10,000 increments, very rarely, unless I'm in the lower price point. Correct. I, I agree. It depends what price point you're in. I was just using it as an example. Yeah. I don't pinch above that search parameter. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Anybody else? How do y'all price yours when you're pricing? Do you have a methodology on pricing? David, how about you? We do. That makes that makes a lot of sense of the 50, though, like to, to get that rounded up. Um, in fact, I was just as been looking on uh, a couple of listings to see on some competitors, and they're doing just the opposite of what he said. So that was very, very impactful. Yeah. Good deal. Anybody else on that? If not, we'll move on to another topic. Okay, so I'm going to open it up to you guys. Um, what do y'all want to talk about? I kind of started off a little bit here. What do y'all want to know more about? Um, is there anything that anyone specifically wants to talk about? Um, if not, we I've got a couple other things, but that's just as a default if nobody's talking. So, so I want to hear from y'all. Anybody? Kathy, I don't mean to uh, manipulate the time, but I would say that, um, you know, overseeing a, a residential group, we're always concerned about leads and lead generation. But, you know, at the beginning of the year, we're talking business plans and setting out your plans for the year, checking back with your business plan. You know, I love these meetings. I, I almost, and I know that the Freedom Team does series. You know, uh, Stephanie Gillisand did the series on um, uh, not foreclosures, but short sales. And these are great. This open forum is great. But I mean, I know we're always looking for leads and where to get them, how much they cost, return on investment. Okay, so let's start there then. What are y'all doing for some leads? How, what do you, what are, throw out some ideas. Um and let's talk about that. What are y'all doing for your lead gen? Paul? Well, um, I just, uh, I'm kind of like reinventing right now because that that was my biggest, um, uh, I guess, force in driving me to make some decisions about my uh, my my marketing spend. I uh, When I first started with the Realtor.com, I was crushing it. I literally, uh, in a one year, I had a thousand percent ROI. You know, um, it was insane. And, but it just, it, it's been dropping off and dropping off and they've been having to give me massive credits because they'll say, oh, we'll give you 40 leads, you know, in this zip code. And I get 20 in a year. It's just, the, you know, the Seattle market is just really, really weird because 
it was like realtor.com just dried up. So now, yeah, I'm desperately looking now for another venue. I mean, I've been watching that Levi, uh, you know, LASIK or yeah. Life yeah. Game, and, <laughs> and things like that. I'm thinking about reinventing that aspect of it, going, you know, with the passive uh, prospecting and so forth. Um, so yeah, that's that's something I really want to hear what what people are doing. I mean, I um, I was looking at this one program, and I can't remember what it was, but it was about sixty two hundred bucks to build out a website, and then they want you to go around town and interview all the, the restaurant owners and barbers and this that and the other, and pile them all in and create this. It, it just it was just like so overwhelming and um and then somebody i mentioned it and somebody goes don't do it you know they're like uh, you can just do the same thing with um youtube uh yeah youtube you can just do your own you make your own yeah. channel you don't need that website uh it, says it takes a little time to get seo built up but you know that kind of thing so anything uh like i said i'm down to one zip code um and i'm yeah kind of just right there on the edge going what am i gonna do so yeah. Hey, Kathy, is anybody doing a uh, top producer has a new program or, or a few months old? It's uh, AI technology with geofencing. So they'll sell you a zip code. Uh, they've solicited me for $450 a month for 12 months. And they're apparently want to give me 500 leads for the year. That breaks down to 42 leads a month. But they say you won't get them all in the first couple of months. It's going to take three months to build it up. Uh, has anybody done the top producer one geofencing AI technology with that? No, I have not. Anybody know about that? It sounds pretty good. Of course, they never guarantee anything, but you're guaranteed to pay them the four fifty a month for twelve months. That's for real. Yeah. The problem yeah. with all those that I've seen, and, and maybe somebody else can correct me, but that that I've seen on this is that pool used to work two years ago when people were sitting at home, they were getting paid to sit on the couch. And as more and more are going back to the workplace and getting back in the traditional stuff, they, they really want that sincerity of, of a human touch and they're not getting that in those. And so, for example, we used to have some very good um, lead sources that, you know, I could close three out of five. They were, they were very good. And I'm very fast. Usually like if somebody's on them within 30 to 40 seconds, I'm on them. And I'm finding that I'm the third, fourth guy. Sometimes it's called them because depending on what service they bought them from, they're 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 getting on there. So I haven't had much luck with them. And I would think as more and more AI technology gets involved, that response time is going to get even faster to the point of I I don't know if they're applicable at that point. Now I freak people out all the time with realtor.com. I I mean, because like I'm the minute I've got a, a special ringtone set up on my phone and everything else. And it's just I drop every I'll be in church and it'll go off and I'll start calling them right there and then walk out, you know, and and make that call. Uh and they're just going, Oh my God, I just pressed this button. Um, and the same thing. Uh realtor.com is like overselling now because they're desperate. Um, and because I listen to this philosophy, they called me up and they said, Hey. We've got another spot for you in 98075. And I'm like, okay, and you want me to buy that? And they're like, well, well, yeah, don't you? And I'm like, okay, you've only delivered me half of the leads that you promised me already. How can you possibly open up another spot? I said, when you can't deliver to me, you know, and that's so that, you know, and like I said, I was, I was super fast with them. And, and like I said, I mean, I, I pretty much almost nailed every single time I got in touch with somebody on the phone, but yeah, that, that's been the thing. I think it's, it's this automate. I mean, it's just like anything. Um, you get, you get a call from an unknown number and you just tend to, you know, disregard for the most part. I mean, we as agents don't typically do that because almost every time I answer the phone, it's, you know, it's no, there's nothing on the other end, but you know, that's, yeah, that's the speed to lead part of it is um, I think it does freak people out sometimes. Yeah, it's crazy. It, yeah, technology is crazy. Anybody else? Does anybody else know about what uh, Paul just mentioned? Anybody got calls on it or tried it? I'm also using Realtor.com as well. And I find more now that I don't know what the verbiage they're using on what the uh, the client is clicking, but I keep getting people that are already working with an agent. And it's getting more and more um with that like they clicked on a property 
you know, and I call them as soon as I get the text in, as soon as I can, I can get to it. But then they tell me they're, they're already working with another agent. Now, I'm sure half of those are lying, <laughs> but it just seems like it's happening more and more. Does anybody else experience that? Absolutely. And, and the thing is, I think that Realtor.com has somehow been branded as a free um, tour guide, you know, for people that want to look you know, I mean, they'll, you know, I mean, they called me on the weekend and I find out that, well, they're, they're realtors golfing. I'm out of busting my butt, you know, and they're like, well, I want to see this right now. And I'm like, well, let me ask you a few questions. And then I go through, are you pre-qualified? Yes, I'm pre-qualified. I'm like, okay, great. Um, You know, are you currently working with a realtor? Uh, yes, I am. I'm like, I'm, I'm straight up. I'm so, sorry, not a tour guide, man. I'm just, you know, if they're if they're already disclosing, I can't go in there and try and take the you know take that relationship. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm getting the same thing with Realtor.com. Okay. So what other lead sources, or whether you're buying leads or doing other things, uh, to Paul's question, besides Realtor.com, what else is, is somebody finding that's been effective for themselves? You know, always your network in your sphere is number one. Um, you know, that's where you really want to spend to me most of your marketing dollars. And we could talk all the whole time about that. But is there anything else that anyone else is finding um, that's been good? Um, Chaylin, you had your hand. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I actually am um, working with a, another fellow EXP agent. Um, and so she's going to teach me later this afternoon how she's doing this. But she has made an ad on Facebook. So she's, it's pretty cheap, but she's getting like two or three leads that convert per month for specifically new construction mm. because we have a really low inventory here in Colorado. And I mean, it's probably everywhere, but, um, and so she's been able to, um, nab people on new construction sides. So, um, like I said, I don't know a whole lot about it yet, but I'm going to learn this afternoon. She's going to help me set one up. Is she part of the freedom team? No, unfortunately we met wow. after I had joined and she was, she's already been with EXP for a couple Well, years. you'll have to get the, the scoop on that and then you can come in and teach us. Okay. Sounds good. What kind of ad she's doing and. Yeah. And then doing. somehow she uses KV core yeah. um, for like, so she can tell the ring time. It's the same thing. Like she, the um, calls go through KV core. So yeah. It, there's a lot of stuff, but um, yeah, once I learn, I'll, I'll share. Yeah. I mean, if you set it up, if you set your things through KV core, then you can see when they're looking at things, you know, and specifically, you know, what you're looking at. I don't know what she's, what they're looking at. I don't know what specifically she's putting out there as the ad, but if she's directing them in through KV core, that's the beautiful thing. Like you can see specific houses, specific things that they're looking at um, before you've even made the call right out to them. So it's super powerful. Anybody is, else? Oh, I, go ahead. Jump, I just want to jump in real quick. You know, when I first got into real estate, um, it was just 2016, but um, I met this fellow. His name is Grant Wise, and he's out of Benville. You know him? Yeah. And it was called Modern Agent Mastery. Taught you how, you know, everything, how to you know, build out ads. And I did. And the one thing is, is that I got so busy that I couldn't build those ads anymore. And now he has another program called Whitley that evidently will build the ad for you. But um, that was my thing is uh, my old broker was like, no, press the flesh, press the flesh. This will never work. And I got executive club my first year. And I got over 400 leads over the course of the year for a $7,000 spend. Yeah, um, has anybody used Grant? He's been around a while. Um, Michael, have you used him? Do you know who he is, Grant Wise? No. I know, I know who he is. I've never, I've never used him, though. Yeah. What do you do for lead gen? Are you just doing your sphere at this point and past clients? Oh man, I'm a heavy, I'm still a heavy prospector, you know, three hours every morning. I call everything from cancels for sub owners, um, heavy on probates and estates. Um, I'm considering, I'm looking at uh, hiring an ISA. So I don't know if anybody's done any ISAs or, you know, callers to help them on that or hiring a team of those just to start siphoning because there's so many areas I don't get to just like just listen just soul calls to help uh, fill up the funnel from all that you know I have success selling in high-end areas but you know there's I think there's a lot of food left on the table from um, you know you, you can send a postcard and say hey I just sold your neighbor's house but I think that goes in 
the circular file really fast and you can't interact with that with that direct mail. I've had success with direct mail in the past, but it's just, I think, you know, the interaction of the phone call or getting somebody to, just to say, hey, yeah, I'm thinking of moving in the next six to 12 months, put him in that top level funnel just so you can have one layer uh, in front of you. So that's one thing I'm, I'm looking to move on. But what, um, what source do you use to get numbers when you're calling? Use Red X, Vulcan 7? I use Mojo. So they've gotten, they've okay. always done well with um, accurate numbers. Like, pulling expires for sub owners. I pay them for, um, you can do a circular search for neighborhoods and they'll, they'll pull that out. And then I don't know, people use Forewarn. It's a great source for finding, you know, phone numbers in your, in your local neighbor, in your local area. Um, and I think as an NAR, uh, member, we get Forewarn for free. Yes, we do. Yeah. We do. So if you don't, if you, aren't familiar with forewarn, like I just said, we get that for free. So you may want to look into that and um, consider that. So curious, Michael, out of your, out of expireds for sale by owners, of course, they're the ones raising their hands, probate, all the different things that you're doing, where are you finding the return on the time? Um, where are you finding the best return on your time? For past clients, past clients sphere of influence still make up probably 50 to 60% of my business. Uh, probates and estates are 30 to 35%. Okay. And then, and then the rest is a mix of, um, you know, just listed, just sold, past client, excuse me, um, expired, canceled. Uh, what else am I calling? So on your probate, are you just going like to the county record, the, the the public record that's filed? Is that or do you buy a list for those two? I buy a list, for, and I've used this company called U.S. Probates. I believe they're out of Tulsa. Maybe I'd have to go back and look, but I've been getting a list from them. I spend uh, I think two hundred bucks a month for the list that they send me, and probably get. 200 names, 150, 200 names, not to sound morbid or anything, but it just depends upon how many people had passed the month before, yeah. but that's a renewing list. And that's why I, and you can go back and look at the, the class that we did on that before. It's a, um, or it's a recession proof business because every single month you're getting a new list. And right now we've got um, a lot of baby boomers that are, you know, go in that direction. Unfortunately, I've seen it with a lot of my um, people, my age, you know, buddies whose parents are passing away. I just, I've got an appointment tomorrow. The buddy man called me from Florida. He said, Hey, um, can you help me sell mom's house? And I said, sure, absolutely. And then they know from the proficiency of doing it on social media and, and putting all the messages out there, the importance of having a will, the importance of yeah. uh, making sure your, your folks are set up like that or loved ones. Um, but if you can start um, dialing in or start calling, start calling a state attorneys and just say, Hey, yeah. listen, I do a lot with probates in my area. And, um, just wanted to see number one, do you have a go-to, um, realtor that you work with that has a proficiency in that? Um, if not, can I take you to lunch and, and just talk about that? If you line up, if you make two or three of those calls every day and you line up uh, one lunch a week and you get, you know, by the end of the year, if you have 10 to 12, attorneys that you're working with that are sending you two to three deals for the year. That's a, I mean, that's, you know, 20 to 30 deals you didn't have before just from picking up the phone and calling that one source. Yeah, that's good. You know, and then there's a divorce, uh, same thing in the divorce realm, right? So absolutely. Yeah. I've got a buddy that's taken a, a, that course. It's a little, it's a little on the expensive side, the one that they're, they're, they're doing, but I know that they provide the marketing, they provide the scripts, they provide the means to do that. So I've been thinking of that, but I'm like, I've got my hands full with uh, with probates and mastering that and trying to to be even even better with that. But I think a lot of people don't make the calls is because they, you know, it's it's based on fear because they don't know what to say, and uh, either that or they're just uh, complacent. You got to think what's what's the worst thing that can happen from calling that uh, probate attorney. They're gonna cuss you out and hang up. That's the worst. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's the very worst thing. Um, so I wanted to say something about the divorce thing, but Paul, you had your hand up. Let's well, I have a quick question for Michael. Uh, take away the attorneys, the professionals who answer the phone or have a secretary, just calling the average homeowner. When you make 50 calls in a week or a month, however you do it, what is your percentage of people picking up the phone and actually saying hello versus no response, no answer or voice? You're talking about from his list, his U.S. probate list? Well, just you say, you know, you call people to to kind of just stir conversation, but not somebody professional. I'm talking just maybe you're canvassing a neighborhood by phone. 
Yeah, um, probably, you, you know, one out of, that's a good question. One out of uh, 10, I'd say right now. So you make a hundred calls, you might get 10 people answer out of those 10. It goes from there. You know, you you consider all agents are probably working on a, a 97 to 98% fail rate. Yeah. Right. We're only succeeding 2% of the time. I, you know, on my mojo, um, because I had my, my number and a Google voice number on there for a while, I, my coach recommended me getting a couple of new numbers. So I went to this uh, new, new thing called burnerapp.com mm -hmm. where you can buy a couple of new numbers and put them on there so that those new numbers will show up. Um, it's still your local, like I'm in the 502 zip code. It's still your own zip code, but I'm getting a little bit, you know, it's a little bit more pickup rate because they're not seeing my number. Mine's, I guarantee mine's marked as a uh, as spam or the other numbers marked as spam because I've been using it so long. And I've got some buddies that have 20 of those numbers and they're constantly just using the next number every time that they dial for their team just so that they get more pickups. So that may be a little, just a little tweak you can do if you're doing a lot of calls every day is go to burner.app or I think it's burnerapp.com or something like that. There's plenty of places you can buy more numbers, but um, just give you another, you know. So you just put that on your same phone. It just shows up as a different. How you do just you put, yeah, you, do, you just drop it into Mojo and have it call you. And then it recognizes that number and you start using it as a, uh, as, as a whitelisted type number. Do you got to have Mojo for it to work with that on your phone? You have to have a dialing, like whether it's whether it's Vulcan or whatever dialing yeah, system you use. Yeah, yeah, it just you just use the it comes back through the burner app, and then if the person calls back, it's actually calling you back from the burner app, and they can it shows the caller ID. It, they can leave voicemails on there, um, so it's a it's a it's a good little app. I'm just curious because I get about four calls a day from I think ASC or ACS Auto Warranty Company. I can't get them to leave me alone. This has been going on three months. And I know the average person out there, if they don't run a business and don't have to pick up their cell phone, they may let it go to voicemail. And then if it's important, they call back. I don't know if people are answering their phone today like they used to, you know, no, because of those kind of not. things. They're definitely not. Definitely yeah. not. So not that we shouldn't try. And I love everything else you're saying. I love everything you're saying. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think the most important tool we have is that one right there. If people would just right pick that up and make a few calls a day, your whole life will change. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and you heard what Michael said to start his whole thing to, um, a few minutes ago. He does three hours a day of prospecting. Yeah. You know, that's what agents don't want to do. You know, they don't want to spend two or three hours a day on prospecting, um, which is why our, our fail rate is what it is. You know, it's like, and what do you sell a year, Michael? How much do you sell in a year? I did 15 million last year in volume. Yeah. So he's doing 15 million and, you know, he is, prospecting every day and so that's a note for somebody <laughs> you know it's like if you want to get to the level that Michael's at you know you need to uh, we've got to be proactive we can't just sit back yeah, and there's so many agents you know, that are you know in the market that we're all competing with these days um and so um okay one thing I was going to mention about the going back on the divorce and the probate so I, I got a certification. It was a different one, I think, probably than the one you're talking about your buddy's getting. Um, it's RCS-D. It's weird. It's real It's real, real estate collaboration specialist-divorce. But um, it was an attorney that taught that class and created this whole designation around it. And I took that probably eight or 10 years ago after selling hundreds of houses. And my mouth was on the floor about things that we don't think about as realtors that we need to educate our people, you know, our, our people with. And so um, I could probably do a whole class on that specifically, and maybe I will one day. But um, but you need to make sure that you're well, we need to be as realtors. We need, if we're dealing with people, like in this case, divorced people, we need to make sure we're being the best advocates for them. You know, one quick thing that I'll tell you is a lot of times in divorces, the um, two things happen. They'll mediate or they, they'll come to an agreement, right? And then one spouse staying in the house and one spouse is, is leaving the house, right? Because they want, they want to uproot the kids, all those things. Um, and what, and so what do they do? They get an appraisal on the house and they determine what the equity is. And then, you know, the leaving spouse or the staying spouse buys out the leaving spouse typically. 
But what we don't, but what they don't do and what attorneys don't direct them to do is to do a title search on the house, to do a home inspection on the house, right? To do the things like that on the house for the staying spouse. You know, like here in Tennessee, all the surprises in, in our houses show up in our crawl spaces. And I know some areas don't have crawl spaces, but that's where all the surprises show up and nobody gets in the crawl space, right? So, you know, one of the stories that they told us in, in, that, in that class was, Staying spouse stay, bought, bought the um, equity out from leaving spouse. Two years later, goes to sell the house. Buyer comes in, new buyer comes in, has a home inspection. And there was some foundation problems on that particular house. 50 grand later, um, 50 grand later, and you know, the divorce was done and over with. And so they negotiated on that, on that house without having any of all of that information on the front end. Um, you know, in, in another quick story about the title, like in divorce, things a lot of times aren't nice, right? We know that. And so sometimes a spouse that, you know, has bad intentions, they'll go put a lien on the house. They'll go take loan out, put a lien on the house unbeknownst to the, uh, you know, to the other party, the other spouse. And if they, if you don't do title searches on the front end and somebody's staying in the house, they're going to be screwed too, because, you know, if they preach this for this two and a half days of classy, one class that I was in or that, that certification, once a divorce is done, it's done. You can't go back and undo. So even when things come up like that after the fact, and so, um, so it was, I literally sat there with my mouth on the floor for two days and I'd sold hundreds of houses at this point, all these things that I had not really thought about as I was talking to you know, maybe a friend that was getting divorced that was keeping that was keeping the house. And so um, there was so much stuff in there. So I would encourage y'all, if you deal in any way, shape or form with divorcing people, partic if there's some the house, it all this doesn't become an issue. But if there's keeping the house, then then those are the those are the things that we you know should know. So or just a couple other things. So um any other thoughts? We've got about 10 more minutes. Anything else anybody wanted to cover? Um, if not, I've got one more topic I'll throw out there, but I want to open it up. Um, any other topics that anybody has on their mind or thoughts or any other Legion ideas that you can throw out that Paul asked about? Okay. So how many of you guys have heard of chat gpt how many are using it it's awesome yeah it is it, yeah it is there's a lot of amazingly good. wonderful yeah so does anybody not know what chat gpt is or not using it or haven't looked into it at all i actually used it to create two different things one was a bio for me and it, why you should work with Paul McMahon, it's, it's, it came out, I was like going, you got to be kidding me, it's so good. And then why, okay. you know, why you might want to move into the Snoqualmie Valley. And it, it just went on about the mountains, the rivers, the lakes, the streams, the population, and how close everybody is. It was insane. So you just put that in there, like why you'd want to move to XYZ and it spits that out? Yep. Okay, so I haven't done that. I love that. So let's talk about that for a second. You mentioned about the YouTube earlier, right? You know, right. it's like living in, that's what Levi Lasik, I think, does. I know Jason Wilkie and um, uh, Jesse Yacht, uh, Dayu, is that how you say his name? Dayu with EXP. So having these YouTube channels and it's living in whatever city you're in. And, you know, I remember learning about that about a year ago when I was like, okay, there's already like 10 people literally doing Nashville. Um, and so they were like, it doesn't matter. Like, look how many people are coming in. People are going to resonate with you and your personality, just like some people resonate with somebody else's, you know, personality style. So, so think about like, you could use chat GPT and create a whole, you know, like you just did, right. You could create, um, a whole script and then you could just do a video about that. Right. You know, and your overlay on your YouTube is, why would you want to move to X, Y, Z or the flip re the reverse of that? Cause you're just trying to get eyeballs on your YouTube. Why you don't want to move to. Right. And so like Nashville, it'd be like, cause it's hotter in Hades in August here. Right. You know, so you're not going to say anything really big and terrible, 
but you know, there's always things you can say that about your city that aren't the greatest, that isn't going to scare somebody off. Um, and those are what, you know, everyone wants the negative news for whatever reason. Um, Cause I know like Jesse, like Jackson, I don't know if y'all know Jackson Wilkie and all, and I think Levi does this too, but they'll do the topics that way too. Like, you know, the cons of moving to Nashville, Tennessee. So now you can use chat GPT, write all that for you. And then just, you got a script for yourself. That's really cool. So I've been using it for real estate descriptions. Have any of y'all been using it for real estate descriptions? Yeah. So Mike, he's been using it for real estate. What else, Mike, you you mentioned, I mean, you said it's really cool and loving it. Like, what all are you using it for? All kinds of stuff. I, I like the idea of the YouTube thing. And a question that I have, since it's on my mind, uh, for the people that are doing videos, what programs are you using for editing your vid videos? I use InShot. Um, uh, InShot? InShot, mm-hmm. I-N-S-H-O-T. So uh-huh. Um, you can put it on your phone. And then if you have, I think if you have to have a Mac, I don't know. Uh, I'm Apple all the way. Okay. Then you can also download the app on your laptop. So then you don't have to be doing it on your phone the whole time, but I've learned it really well. And it's, once you learn it, it takes some, you know, some, a little bit of a learning curve. It's not hard. It's very intuitive, but it takes a minute to, there's a lot of features. Uh, but once you learn it, you can really crank them out pretty quick. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. And going back to the chat GBT, I also use it for emails a lot. Yeah, clients to you know all kinds of stuff. <laughs> yeah, if you ever struggle, you know what to say with verbiage. You just put your verbiage in there, and then just say create better verbiage, or you know what what do you say? What what are y'all using to tell it to? Do y'all just say create better verbiage? What do you and then put copy and paste? What verbiage do you put in there to to copy and paste your verbiage you did? You know what I'm asking? What are you doing, Mike? Uh, it, it depends. Every situation is a little bit different. Maybe I wanted a description of an area, uh, like uh, someone was saying earlier, or I want, uh, one time I was having trouble just describing part of the house. So there was two, two patios on the back. Well, how do I make a elegant description of the two patios so i put that into uh chat gbt and it just spit out How do this i make an thing. elegant description with uh, with the house with two patios that's right nice. so i just yeah. threw that in there and then it, it you know it just produced this wonderful verbiage to use <laughs> and just kind of cut and paste that and threw that in the description etc but I, I, a lot of different scenarios or you know i'm writing up an email for a client about a house that I have found with it in the link and the description that's on the MLS is not that good. Um, I might use chat GBT to grab more information uh, or better verbiage <laughs> to give to the client. Um, that's good. Um, anybody else using it? I mean, it's so good. So what did you do, um, Paul, when you when you were having it write a bio about you? What did you do? OK, well, I, I just um, I don't know. You know, it's it's funny. I just um, I just typed in um, for, just to see what would come up, you know, so what would be the benefit of working with the Paul McMahon home team? And boom, it just spit out this huge paragraph. Um, like, for instance, I um, I'm going to pop real quick um let's see here uh let's see open ai all right so hold on and I, i'm just going to show you the uh, tell you the question and then kind of give you a real uh brief overview of what it said so you know and the nice thing about it is it, it also will hold on to a lot of your uh your your stuff so um what i wrote in here i said can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Why would you like to live in the Snoqualmie Valley, Washington? 
And it comes up as an AI language model, blah, blah, blah. And it goes, Snoqualmie Valley is a beautiful place located in King County, Washington, USA, surrounded by the Cascade Range to the east and the Olympic Mountains to the west. It is a popular destination for outdoor activities such as hiking, biking, fishing, skiing. The Snoqualmie River runs through the valley and there are many parks and scenic spots to enjoy. One reason someone might want to live in it, and it goes on and on and on. And I only asked it, why would you want to live in the Snoqualmie Valley? Is that crazy or what? That's awesome. So again, going back to YouTube, and we were talking about that right, a little bit. So going back to YouTube, so take the top three things out of there, maybe that you would want to talk about and just mm -hmm. shoot a video, you know, like give a 15 second description about the area where, you know, beautiful mountain, this to the left, this to, or to the east, this to the west. But, you know, and then the top three reasons why you might want to live, right? Because it sounds like it gives a list. Um, so boom, like you can create all this video content, um, you know, if if that's something that that we're looking to do. So so there's some questions in the chat here. So let me make sure we get that. Um, all right. So yes, Patricia, uh, forewarn is that that's how you spell that. So uh, Kaylin says to share that. Yeah, the trainings for Aaron that he's doing, it is um, is in the Freedom Team on Workplace. So you can go back and watch all the recordings. And while we're talking about that tomorrow, I think he's doing the last one tomorrow on uh, never, what is, it's called, it's never lose a listing um, presentation tomorrow. So that we're, we've been doing some Wednesday, um, Wednesday series. And so he's done, you know, done the, a four part series on listings. So that's tomorrow at um, 11 PST. So all that y'all, y'all know all of these things that we have a calendar and freedom team. So to, it's the first thing that comes up when you go to the freedom team. So pay attention to the calendar. Um, because we're doing a lot of cool things. We're having a lot of cool, you know, guest speakers come in and do some amazing training, just like we talked about, you know, with Aaron's done a four-part series on listings. Um, and some, I think uh, Mike, uh, Michael uh, mentioned about like the probate and the wills. I'm actually talking to our, my um, real estate attorney. I've asked him to maybe come in in June. We're trying to work it out to do maybe a two-part series around estates and wills. Um, what he does is so important, not only for us as agents personally, but to even talk and educate our own clients as you know they're buying their biggest investments that they're going to buy um, and why you need, why everyone should have one or the other. He's he's all about estates um, for for multiple reasons, which he you know if we get this class lined up, he'll talk about um, you know. And one of the misconceptions that I always had about estates is you had to have a lot of money or you'd have a lot of you know wealth, which is not true at all. Um, and there's a lot of benefits to setting up an estate versus a will. And so, like I said, trying to get him in. Um, so Paul says I have a person commercial real estate. Oh, he's got to go. Okay. Um, yep. So Paul does, um, he does a commercial now in Nashville. He's been a realtor for many, many years, switched to commercial a year or so ago. And Suzanne says, does chat GP, GPT, it is, create the same for multiple users? You know, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. Like, I guess if you keyed in the same exact question, it would spit the same exact answer out. But the likelihood of me asking the same exact question the same exact way that say Paul would is probably not likely. Okay. So, I just oh, didn't yeah. want to have the same, you know, listing description as somebody else and be accused of copying theirs. But yeah. well, um, I mean, if, if it came out exactly the same, I don't think they could accuse you of copying theirs since we all would have got copied it from the AI. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. They, they would have copied it as well. <laughs> What did you say, David? They've had a bunch of issues with that. A bunch of programmers for quite a few different companies have used the pro version and put in source code and actually had to do their job for them. And they've gotten in trouble for that because when you accept your EULA, you give them access to anything that you produce on that platform. And so pieces of very specific, very proprietary software have been 
floating around the internet from several successful companies because they use ChatGPT or no, their employees use ChatGPT. Yeah, I can see, you know, this is, we're on the very early stages of this, um, right? I can mm -hmm. see, yeah, it's probably gonna get a little crazy as time goes on, we'll see. <laughs> we'll you see. You know, I, I, I participate in an AI ethics group <clears throat> and it's always recommended that when you use ChatGPT or Google AI, um, that it's giving you a guide a recommended guide. It's always advised that you kind of accent whatever you pull from an AI tool with your uniqueness to the message that you're trying to get out. Yeah. And that keeps you out of the plagiarism category from not completely reusing someone else's or some other tool's complete work. Um, so it is always recommended that you try to add some sense of uniqueness from who you are and what you want to add to the message, which kind of changes it up. That's good. I actually just did that on my listing. I listed this week um, or last week. I, it spit it out and it was way better than what I had. But there were a couple of things that I kind of flipped around and all, not for that reason. I just like, I was like, okay, this needs to be in there. I like this different. So I tweaked it a little bit, but, uh, but that's good from an ethics and learning standpoint, because um, yeah, I think, you know, there's going to probably be some craziness that kind of, you know, maybe from plagiarism, like you said, or other ways as this really gets going. So, so we're a little bit after the hour. And like I said, y'all show y'all come tomorrow. Um, if you haven't watched Aaron's other um, listings, uh, trainings, I highly recommend you do that. Um, and then he's going to be finishing that up tomorrow. And I um, um, appreciate everybody being here. Y'all have an awesome week. Bye y'all.